So the 2018 NFL regular season has concluded and upon the conclusion of every NFL season is a bunch of coaching firings, GM firings, coordinator firings, all that kind of stuff. And right now there have been eight head coaching vacancies that are open right now. So 25% of the teams in the NFL are looking for head coaches. Uh, that's an incredible turnaround right now. And uh, you know, you look at the Jaguar side of things, man. We were five and eleven last season, so you know you would think there's going to be a big kind of mix up of a, a bunch of things going on, whether it be you know GM firings, coaching firings, coordinator firings, whatever. Um, you know, you would think with a team that was as bad as the Jaguars were this season, uh, that lost what eight of their last ten games, you would think that no, they lost ten of the last twelve games. Uh, you would think a team like that would go through some, you know, big kind of coaching changes. However, the Jaguars have not. The Jaguars uh, executive vice football, vice president, whatever the hell he is, uh, Tom Coughlin, he's here to stay. That's no surprise to me. Head coach Doug Marone, I could have gone either way on this. I probably would have elected to keeping Doug Marone, um, you know, if that's just me. But, you know, he's here to stay. GM Dave Caldwell, that's the most puzzling thing just because, you know, Dave Caldwell has been with the team since 2013 and, you know, he's had some good picks, he's had some bad picks just like every general manager, but the big thing about uh, Dave Caldwell is just his commitment to Blake Bortles. He's committed five whole years to Blake Bortles, he even doubled down on Blake Bortles after everybody was saying not to, he doubled down, gave him a new contract and now we're going to look to obliterate that contract as... Uh, it wasn't a good signing. We're going to get a lot of dead money from Blake Bortles, but um, it wasn't a good decision. Whatever. But, you know, usually when a GM misses on a quarterback, that they get shown the road, but it's not our case. Uh, but the big thing about the Jaguars, man, is that we've only made four coaching changes. We've, we've fired our running back coach, Tyrone Wheatley, who I can understand that just because uh, you know, you, you saw Tom Coughlin basically call out Leonard Fournette and TJ Yellen after last game, just sitting on the sidelines, totally disengaged from the game, playing with their hair or whatnot. You know, that's on Tyron Wheatley to be able to get these guys kind of motivated, actually stand up and look like you're a part of the team. Um, offensive line coach Pat Flaherty, uh, four fifths of your offensive line is gone. You're on your eighth left tackle this season. Um, interesting call, but whatever. Um, defensive line coach Marion Hobby. The defensive line wasn't as good as last year. Didn't produce as many sacks, pressures, um, whatever. I can see that. Defensive back coach Perry Fowell, I believe his name is. He, um, you know, the defensive backs, I mean, you saw a little bit of, you know, Jalen out there kind of freelances every now and then. You saw a lot of coverage breaks down. So I can understand that. But at the end of the day, man, when you have a bad season, you have to hold some people accountable. And the Jaguars are holding these four coaches accountable. And, you know, of course, we already fired our offense coordinator midseason. So, obviously, that's a vacancy open up. They're not going to fire uh, Coach Scott Milanovic. Uh, he's, I think, assuming still his quarterback coach role. So, we're going to be out looking for offensive coordinators. Um, so, we'll see kind of how that goes. I'll keep you guys updated as, um, you know, once this position actually is filled. And I'll give you a little bit more details about that. But... You know, I'm not someone that's going to be calling for people's heads. Um, I'm not. You know, these guys have families. They don't deserve to be fired. They don't deserve to be fired. But, you know, with, with what's going on right now, you know, we're going to probably be keeping defensive coordinator Todd Wash. So the Jaguars, what, what I see by this is they're basically saying this is all on the players, you know. We either have a, a have a cancerous group of players. We have a few bad seeds that are bringing the whole team down. Um Either we don't have a good roster, which I don't believe. I don't think that we don't have a good roster. So I think it's just that um, they think there are probably some cancerous units to this team. And there probably are some, you know. I mean, you start off with Leonard Fournette. I mean, I could go on and on about Leonard Fournette and just some of the stuff that he's been through. But clearly the coaches aren't happy with him. I mean, they voided all his guarantees. So that makes them easy to either cut or trade for another team. But, you know, I'll go on more to Leonard Fournette in another video. Uh, but, you know, you had Doug Marone say that there was one point in the season where they literally had a player refuse to go into the game, and they handled that internally. Now, either that was with Barry Church being cut, or I don't think it was Barry Church. I think it's probably Carlos Hyde. When Carlos Hyde was healthy, he was active for a whole game, but he didn't go in. In the very next game, he's inactive. So that's what I lead to believe. But there's going to be some major 
off-season things done. I think with this with this roster, uh, you know, I think I think you have to assess who your leaders are, who the bad seeds are. You know, with a guy like Jalen Ramsey, I love Jalen Ramsey. He's a good player. I love him in between the whistle, but. He needs to be a better team, be a better leader. I don't want to get rid of Jalen Ramsey, but you know he's got to make, he's got to humble himself and say, you know, maybe I'm I'm the best, you know, in between the whistles. I'm I'm good on the field. I'm a top player at my position. But are you really all that good of a leader? Are you all that good of a leader going up to every you know press conference and saying I didn't do anything wrong? You know, I'm doing my job right. It's up to other people to do their stuff right. Uh, is it a good leader to be skipping OTAs? Uh, to go out and work out in Tennessee with your dad, uh, just some of the just some of the leadership qualities of Jalen Ramsey, I think could be better. You know, uh, I really do. And there there's just some other spots that you know are going to have to be evaluated to say, okay, uh, can this player help us be better? Now, when you look at the Jaguars since 2013, there's really not all that much raw, all that much coaching staff turnover. You know, if we're gonna go into the 2019 season, so from 2019 to 2013. Um, we've had one GM, we've had two head coaches, two defense coordinators, and we've had four offense coordinators. Uh, you know, on Bortles' is five years on the team, he's gotten three offense coordinators fired. So, uh, you know, we've been through our fair share of offense coordinators. But other than that, there's really not much turnover on the on the coaching staff. And that's a good thing. You know, I don't want to be cycling in coaches like, you know, Arizona brought in, you know, Steve Wilkes and he's out after a year. I, I don't want to be that team. You know, we were kind of like that with Mularkey back in the day where we fired him after one season. Um, you know, I don't want to be that team that's going to be constantly firing coaches. But at the same time, man, uh, you got to hold coaches accountable when they're not doing their thing. And I don't know. I, I, I probably would have fired Todd Walsh just for the sake of just for the sake of making some kind of statement. I mean, Todd Walsh is a good coach and everything. I mean, there's been some parts about this defense that throw me nuts. Uh, you know, there's even been players like A.J. Boulier, Jalen Ramsey, Deshaun Gibson, all have indirectly called out Todd Walsh and his scheme and whatnot, basically saying that they think that A.J. Boulier a few weeks ago said that he thinks teams have pretty much figured out their scheme. I, I would have brought in a fresh defense coordinator, a guy, you know, there would be defense coordinators drooling to take over this defense, you know, whether it be like a Todd Bowles or uh, you know, any one of these guys that are out there that could be available. I just, I would have had a little switch up there, um, brought in a new defensive philosophy, a new defensive mindset, and, you know, I would have gone about it that way, but uh, whatever. I mean, the Jaguars, they made four, only four coaching firings after this disastrous 20, uh, 2018 season, and it's just got me believing that the coaches and the GM uh, Tom Coughlin all think that the problem is within the 53-man roster and there's going to be trying to remove a lot of the cancerous players from this locker room and I can almost guarantee that they are going to be like right now my hot take you know I'll go into this on another video but I think Fournette's gone I think Fournette's gone one way or the other whether it be a trade a draft day trade is why I think he's going to be gone um, you know whether it be they just outright cut him but you know, you got to remove cancerous players from this team that are bringing the that are just bringing the culture down, and that's my take on that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of all the all the coaching, just what happened with the coaching staff, what you guys would have done, because I'm curious to get the get the pulse of the fan base. But uh, yeah, that's about all I got. This is UCF Jaguar, Widgetjag.com, and I'm out.